బాల భాగవతం పూతన అన్ త్రినవర్త నౌ కంసా కేమ్ టు నో దట్ అ బేబీ బాయ్ హ్యాడ్ బీన్ బోర్న్ ఇన్ ద హౌస్ ఆఫ్ నంద అట్ గోకుల నథింగ్ కుడ్ బీ ప్రూవ్డ్ బట్ నెవర్ దెస్ హీ హ్యాడ్ అ స్నీకింగ్ సస్పిషన్ దట్ ఇట్ మస్ట్ బీ హిస్ డ్రెడెడ్ ఎనిమీ సో ఆల్ హిస్ ఎఫర్ట్స్ వేర్ ఎయిమ్ దట్ గెట్టింగ్ రిడ్ ఆఫ్ దట్ చైల్డ్ హిస్ క్రూకడ్ మైండ్ వర్క్ అవుట్ ఆల్ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ స్కీమ్స్ టు పుట్ ద ఇన్ఫెంట్ టు డెత్ Putana was the most frightful and dreaded of Rakshasis. She was treacherous and villainous to the very core of her being. She knew all kinds of magical tricks and spells which helped her in the Asuric work she did for Kamsa. She was an Indian witch. At Kamsa's behest, she entered Gokula. by her secret powers she transformed herself into a lovely lady she wore garments of shimmering silk and decked herself with the most gorgeous ornaments the fragrance of the jasmine in her hair had the strangest power of attraction with the graceful sway of her hips casting sidelong glances she made her way to nanda's house nobody even thought of barring her way for she was extremely well dressed and looked as though she came from a very high family she went up to where mother yashoda was sitting with her little baby she cooed her she cooed over the child in a honeyed voice yashoda was really impressed by this magnificent stranger putana then begged to hold the infant in her arms for a few moments very sweetly she asked yasoda if uh, she could plant a little kiss on the child's forehead how could the proud mother refuse such a simple request then the wicked demoness suckled the child to her breast which was full of the deadliest poison by this time she had already gone out of the courtyard of the house under the pretense of entertaining the baby what she in her stupidity did not know was that he was none other than the lord himself he clutched at her breast with both his tiny hands and sucked hard he sucked and sucked till he had drawn out not only all the poison but also the very life breath of the rakshasi At once she regained her old hideous form and screamed out loud enough enough let go no more no more she gasped and writhed and stri- struggled all in vain for the child would not leave her till he had sucked the last drop of life from her she twisted her body this way and that kicked her hands and legs helplessly about with all the strength she could muster and she perspired profusely her hair got mangled with the dust and her entire body shook so violently that it set the earth trembling finally she crashed to the ground with a roar that resounded in the three worlds people scattered in fear and all the trees within 12 miles radius fell down uprooted then all was quiet mother yashoda came hurrying out to see what had happened to her baby oh what a relief it was to see that her darling was absolutely unharmed but to her horror she saw that he was playing happily on the dead carcass of an awful demoness she held him close and kissed his little bro over and over again she shuddered to think what her fate would have been had the rakshasi succeeded in her plot but the baby apparently oblivious to the sensation he had created smiled contentedly and snuggling into her his mother's arms promptly fell fast asleep the people of gokula then chopped putana's body into pieces and set fire to it over logs of wood it was evening and the night curtain was slowly falling over the village the flames from the pyre licked high and the curling smoke went up a lovely fragrance spread everywhere even the tamasic body of a hideous sorceress had been purified by the touch of the lord when kamsa came to know that Putana had failed in her task he summoned to him an asura whose name was Trinavrta 
This Asura was cunning and tricky and his ways were more demonical than Putana's. He could raise dust storms and whirlwinds at a moment's notice and could easily sweep away into a cyclone the heaviest objects on the earth. One day, Yashoda was sitting with her baby on her lap in her courtyard when suddenly she felt him grow heavier. Every moment his weight increased till at last she grew so heavy that she had to put him down. This was a strange thing to happen and she grew frightened lest it forebode evil. She ran into the village to find if anyone could explain to her the meaning of the strange phenomenon. In the meantime, Trinavarta Asura saw his chance to do his dirty mischief. He raised a terrific storm. The wind raised a blinding dust which clouded the whole atmosphere. Dust got into the hair, eyes and mouths of people. They could see nothing. Their breathing got choked. They stumbled and clutched at any support they could find. Gokula had never known such a tornado before and with all the force and power he could muster, the Rakshasa lifted the baby high up into the swirling wind. Mother Yashoda put out her hands to feel for her little one but she could not reach him anywhere. She screamed loudly and then swooned away. Meanwhile, the demon was using all his strength to lift the baby higher and higher but he found it increasingly difficult to do so because with every passing moment he grew more and more in weight. He clutched at the throat of the Rakshasa and tightened his grasp on it. Trinavarta started choking. It was his plan to lift the child to a great height and then to dash it to the ground so that escape from death would, not, would be impossible. But his plan was properly foil. The child grew heavier and heavier and the Asura gasped more and more for breath. At last, the agony became too much for Trinavarta. Like a heavy stone hurtling down, he fell through the air, the whirlwind of his own creation, and crashed upon a rock. His body was shattered to pieces and his eyeballs popped out of their sockets. Like a huge mountain, he lay there. He was senseless and quite dead. The dust had now settled and the air had cleared. But the baby was lost. Nowhere could he be seen. Till at last, a search party found him on the outskirts of Gokula, playing on the lifeless body of the Rakshasa. Yashoda was hysterical with tears and laughter at finding her baby safe and sound. She kissed him again and again and held him as though she would never let him go. When they got home, she gave him his feed, for the poor little fellow was hungry. Then she put her fingers to his tiny mouth to wipe the milk off from his lips. In a sleepy yawn, he opened wide his mouth. And there, Yashoda saw the entire universe. Sun, moon, stars, mountains, rivers, oceans, animals, birds and everything in the cosmos. Overwhelmed by such an inexplicable vision, she trembled and closed her eyes. But her divine son was to show her many more wonderful things.